Hey, you guys is great. I enjoy doing the show with you folks. Oh, I thank you. We it's like nice doing the show with you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, after 18 years together, our first guests have just renewed their contract for their television show for three more years, and we couldn't be happier for them. Here they are, kids. America's sweethearts, Siskel and Ebert. Come on in, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Let me ask you guys uh, just a general question and then do with it as you will. How, how are you getting along now? Are you okay? I think we're getting along pretty well, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the last show uh, we were uh, fighting, but uh, this uh, time we're getting along good and uh, it's Valentine's Day. I'm trying to decide whether to get Roger the 30-pound uh, box of chocolates or the 60-pound box. <laughs> That's isn't ugliness. that sweet? Do we need isn't this that, kind of that, that, no. 65 pounds I'm down now. He still makes the fat jokes. You know what's going to happen? Before long, instead of being the bald one and the fat one, it's going to be the bald one and the good-looking guy. Yes, yes. And you'll be describing the same person. <laughs> you know what I'd like to get you? I, I don't know, I haven't talked this over with you, but you know those ankle rings you can hang upside down and it's supposed to, you know, bring a lot of blood to the scalp, it might help, I don't know. Would be nice? So you guys are getting along pretty well then, is there? <laughs> I, th I think one of the first time you guys were with us on uh, whatever show we were doing, whenever the hell we were doing it, whatever network we were on then, I don't know. There was a story about, I guess you were interviewing, no, no, it was you, you were interviewing Jack Lemmon. We were Jack both Lemon. interviewing Jack Lemmon. Yeah. We're seated at the table, wait, 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 and Jack Lemmon... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're both interviewing... Are you going to tell the engine here? We're both listen, interviewing listen. Jack Lemmon. Wait, wait, wait. We're time both. out, time out, time out, time out, time out. I'm the butt of this story, and yes. it's always funnier if the guy tells the story that, that is the butt of it, rather than the other guy telling it on the first guy. And besides, you can't tell good jokes. I can go tell ahead, it real slap quick. him. Slap him, Roger. No, no. Why don't we let he, the audience slap him. Just go ahead and no, no. whack him across. Let the audience Hit decide. Let the audience let decide. Let, let the, the audience, audience decide. decide. Okay. And I'll ask the audience which joke was funnier, the box of chocolates jokes or the hanging up and okay, down by the me, ankle. I'd like to make my statement now. Okay. Girls, girls, no, I please chill down. down. I can tell it faster, and I can tell it better. I'll Will tell someone faster. please Here's tell Wait a minute, ask Jack the audience. No, no. Jack You're Lemon. not going to tell that story. Please. That's Don't my Roger. story. I've been Big telling mistake. that story for 15 years. We're eating years. up network time, Roger. Three <laughs> I'm people. Are going to let the audience decide or not? Uh, first of all, let me see if we have a cut man Gene backstage. Gene and I go out to dinner. Don't do it. Jack, Jack Lemon is Jack Lemon. I don't Aaron believe Roger. you're going to do this. Jack this Lemon. is my story. Dave, hold him back. I'll, I'll tell the damn story. I wish you would. What happened, Dave? I'm in a restaurant. I'm interviewing Jack Lemon. Right. And, and a woman comes up to me and she says, oh, my God, it's Gene Siskel. You're my absolute favorite. And I say to the woman, yeah, but look who's here. And she says, oh, it's Jack Lemon. And she says, I love Jack Lemon. And so now I'm all excited that she likes me and she likes Jack Lemon. And I turn to you and I say, and look, ma'am, who is also here. And the woman says, oh, Buddy Hackett. <laughs> everything on this show. Well, I couldn't have... Why do I have to do everything? I couldn't have told it better myself. <laughs> and Gene uh, certainly couldn't have. Let's talk Gene about... Gene takes 40 <laughs> minutes to tell that story. I'm sitting here. Oh, we've, Roger we've killed sitting this. there. We've killed this. Let the man get on with his... Uh... <laughs> It's, it's, uh, you guys are like accountants. This is your busy time of the year. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Talk about lines that have been used before. <laughs> yes, Academy Awards. Uh, what, how did you feel about the, uh, the films that Very were nominated? I'm pleased that Schindler's List got the 12 nominations. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wish it had gotten two more. <laughs> ben Kingsley for Best Supporting Actor and Embeth Davidits. Mm -hmm. for, uh, she played uh, the uh, maid. And she would have been their 14th nominee. She was, nominee. She yes. was excellent. Yes. Much better than, uh, let's say, Holly Hunter in The Firm or the throwaway part or... Uh, uh, well, that's just the end with Holly Hunter. Well, okay. Was Schindler's List the best movie you saw all year? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. Yes. What would be like the second best? Uh, in my case, The Age of Innocence, and I wish it had more nominations yeah. uh, to show for yesterday's vote. But you know what's going to happen? What about Barbara Streisand? Why didn't she get nominated this uh, year? Know, <laughs> didn't make a picture. Uh, but I heard her in concert uh, on New Year's Eve, and she's great. And she's going to be coming to New York, London. Try and get her on the show. Yeah. Get her on the show and uh, go see it. Do you think the Academy is snubbing Barbara? 
Uh, you know, you really, you have to make a movie. You have to make a movie in order to be eligible. Just, For example, hey, Dave, right, I'm just trying you to made a movie. You're eligible. That's right, I did. I yeah. made my big screen debut. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I missed you. You know, what were your choices in making your big screen debut? Were you, do you have it like, could you have been the Harvey Keitel role on the piano and then you chose Cabin Boy now instead? Now that, yeah, see, you raised <laughs> Well, sometimes, well, sometimes agents get in the way. You have a big, high-powered agent now. The cabin boy, that was the part I was born to play. Now, leave me alone, all right? But Harvey Keitel, you raise an interesting point there. 20, 30 minutes, we see him walking around naked. Now, do we want that? Well, apparently, apparently we do. But you know what I learned a long time ago, and maybe you guys can back me up on this. In, in Hollywood, Oscar is king. <laughs> I haven't heard He's that just looking at me like I'm nuts. I'm just, just a kid trying to have fun. Uh, we got to do a commercial. We'll have more great stories from these guys <laughs> right after this commercial. Bugs, and of course, you know, Beavis and Butthead, they're here. As well. <laughs> you know, I just want to say a couple of things. I haven't seen all of the uh, Best Picture nominations, but I saw that uh, Remains of the Day, and I'm telling you something. That thing, wall to wall, seamless, was one of the nicest pieces of filmmaking it I've was a seen film. everywhere. Really anywhere. Well done, yeah. And Anthony Hopkins, yes. unbelievable. Not for a second did you not think he was anything but that guy. And your heart is breaking for him that he can't uh, declare his love. It's yeah. a great and, story. And then, of course, you saw Shadowlands, where he does. Kind I of, he does find love. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. And, and, and Emma. <laughs> and he's just as good in that. I and mean, Emma Thompson was, was also in good in, in the Remains of the Day. Yeah. She was. So now, do these kids have a shot at it? Um, I don't. I think that uh, it's going to be Tom Hanks winning for uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. He's I, very good. Yeah. You got. You got uh, two. An Irish and English actor. Uh, I think they'll split that sort of vote, and uh, Hanks and, and the cause of the film will carry the day. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, you guys, um, what were we going to talk about? You, something about uh, your. Do we ever go to sleep while we're That's watching? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Shall I tell the story? Uh, am I going to have to tell this one too? <laughs> have you? You go to screenings. You must see yes. 200, 300 movies a year. Mm -hmm. Do sometimes, you ever... you, sometimes you'll leave the screening room. He goes to the John a lot during the screenings. We can tell him. He does. Right? You did go to the John a lot. I, I it's not important. didn't it realize you were that interested. I... <laughs> hey, when you get up, the whole roll lifts. Oh, stop it. Hey. I'll tell you a story. Let me tell you a story about Gene. Why do you let him do 20, that to you? I don't know. He just won't stop. 20 you know, years you're ago. you're carrying the act. I realize that. I know. Oh. Yeah. Listen, now, he's so upset. Here we listen go. the reason why he is so upset is that he's been banned from attending the Olympics. He can't join your mother. Oh, no, why yeah. is that? Well, because uh, at the last games, he was found using the Olympic flame for fondue. <laughs> you see what I mean? He just can't tell a joke. <laughs> 20 years ago, the Chicago Film he's Festival. He's laughing. <laughs> I've seen him laugh more, Yeah, actually, yeah well, just because during, I'm nervous and yes. I wish this was over. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, boys. You know, I think the world of both of you. All right, let's tell the story. 20 years ago, the Chicago Film Festival is showing a Korean film to four critics. One of them is Gene. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the others. Gene leaves the auditorium to make a telephone call during the movie. While he's gone, this movie in which nothing of the slightest shocking nature has occurred yet. Suddenly the woman gets up, leaves the room, and has intimate relations with her poodle. <laughs> then she comes back into the room, and Jean comes back into the theater. We three critics are on the floor laughing, and Jean says, what's so funny? And I said, Jean, she had sex with her dog. <laughs> and Jean says, no, she didn't. There hasn't been any scene like that in this movie. It can't be. <laughs> Mary to our fellow, he says, Mary, he says, is that true? Yes, Gene, it is true. Now, come on, you can't tell me that. I know it isn't true. And then he sat through the rest of the movie and nothing ever, never saw the dog again. And to this day, he doesn't believe that that, that happened. But the real did. challenge was how do you write the review? <laughs> yes. Yeah, right, yeah. Do you leave it out or do you go with it? So I can't, you know, I sort of hedged. I said, there may be some surprise, there are some surprising <laughs> things in the picture. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys ever, um, 
get in trouble, and I know we've talked about this before, you go to see a movie, and maybe it's an actor you like, or maybe it's an actor you don't like, whatever, you write the review, and then there's trouble, good or bad, or... Well, or do you worry people, about you that? You don't even... with no. feedback, like the, the yeah. actor calls you, you up and threatens you. Do you care if actors are what I can't stand? Burt Reynolds always badmouths both of us, mm -hmm. and I gave Cop and a Half a good review, and I'm the only critic in the world who <laughs> liked that movie. You, you must have made a phone call And then call he goes that on one. some talk show, and he's talking about Siskel and Ebert don't like anything I do, and, you know, why did I go out on a limb for him? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a strange situation where I've been knocking Robbie Benson in a lot of pictures for a while. Wow, uh, you're out on the edge yeah. there, aren't you, Gene? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That took guts. And uh, so I'm in uh, Hawaii, and I'm in a pool with my daughter, and she's playing with another little girl, and the little girl says her name is Lyric. And I think, well, that's an odd name. And I start looking around, and sure enough, it's Robbie, Robbie Benson's Benson. daughter. Yes. So th for one week, we were walking by each other in the hallway of the hotel, and he would pass me and not say yeah. a single now, word. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel bad, I doesn't make it? it? I don't care, because I want to have... <laughs> I want to have the right to like his next picture. Yes, but now has there ever been a forum for your work to be criticized? Yes, the Larry Sanders show I was on, and I gave my acting debut and got rave reviews. In fact, you may have seen <laughs> you that. You know, the funny thing is the clipping service didn't provide me with any of those. Entertainment Weekly, as a matter of fact. What it did is they one say? of the great scenes of the year. Did they really? Yeah. Uh -huh. But do you must yeah, understand. I, didn't, I, I, I really didn't know that. That's interesting. But you must understand. He waited until I was out of the country to go on the Sanders show. He was supposed to wait two weeks. We would both go, go on, on there together. Yeah. But yeah, he, he yanked the rug out from under you if that's yeah, possible. Yeah. But, All right. All right. <laughs> I'm exhausted. You, should be ashamed you guys have been out here eight minutes. I'm exhausted. <laughs> You're working hard. Uh, any any last minute picks? Anything you want to mention about the Academy Awards? Uh, it's going to be real easy to predict this year. I think the winners are pretty obvious in, in every category. Schindler's List, probably the film. Mm -hmm. Spielberg, the director. Tom, Tom Hanks. 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 Hollywood actress. Holly Hunter. Yeah. All right. Good job. Uh, it's all. Writer supporting actress from uh, Age of Innocence. Right. Tommy Lee Jones for The Fugitive. I think those six categories. Oh, he was great. Yeah. Man, that first, when you first see him in that movie and he's got that great face, yeah. boy, what a, what a powerful couple of my, seconds. My, my, like my. Seen, what uh, have we here? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to have seen Harrison Ford be nominated? Here's a guy who does great work, mm -hmm. and because he's the centerpiece of a big film. Uh, it was like Steve McQueen, an actor who never got Steve enough McQueen respect. Steve McQueen was great. Oh, he I love great. Steve McQueen, yeah. And doesn't get enough credit. Well, now say something nice about Robbie Benson, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> he was terrific. He was good in one-on-one. One on one. One on one. There you go. There that you go. A good picture. All right, good. Basketball picture. Uh, Roger, always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to see you. Gene, thank, thank you very you. much. It's the boys, kid. We'll be right back here. program tonight, uh, Daryl Hall will be joining us, and from the uh, Charlotte Hornets, uh, Muggsy Bogues plays guard for the uh, Charlotte Hornets in the NBA. The man is five feet, three inches tall. Wow. It's an unbelievable story. Wait a minute, can you feel it? Are you ready? Are you excited? Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's time for Cop on the Edge. Guilty a partner. Now I'm gonna kill you. I'm not afraid to die. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you on the other side. Sweet dreams, copper. Hold it. I've got to give that idea a thumbs down. For once, Gene, I agree with you. <laughs> Foiled by Siskel and Ebert. Not just Siskel and Ebert. Siskel and Ebert on the edge. And they're making fun of me in Cabin Boy. Really? Uh, we have to do a commercial, kids, when we come back. Daryl Hall will be right over there with that Bells thing you saw. CBS Orchestra right over there. Alec Baldwin is on the uh, show tonight. Trisha Yearwood and Sam Cassell from the NBA champion Houston Rockets will be out just a little bit later. Hey, 
you know, that's not very nice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, while the boys, uh, Mujibur and Sirajul, are out uh, traveling the country on their coast-to-coast uh, -coast goodwill tour, I'm, I'm interested now into who is, uh, as to who is running the store around the corner. That's where a they good work. question. They work just around the corner from us here on Broadway, just a couple of doors down. Hal, do me a favor, turn on the external camera. Let's go into the store there. This is the store where they work, and uh, normally they would be right there visiting oh. all of the customers. Oh, look at this. I'll be done. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. All right, all right, Roger. Hi, Gene. That's awfully nice of you boys to pitch in and help out. Thank you very much. You're doing a great job. Who I knew? That's strange, ain't it? <clears throat> hey, Gene, how are you? Nice to see you. Roger, Hi, Dave. nice to see you. You guys saw the Flintstones, right? The movie? Sure. <laughs> Listen to this. I've been working on something. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my first guests. Gene Siskel Stone and Roger Ebert Rock. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> How the hell did you get a TV show? Ladies and gentlemen, for my money, there are no better judges of film today than our first guests. Uh, they are the very reason we have two chairs out here, folks. Please welcome back America's sweethearts, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Here they come. Kids, come on up. It's a little like being at a wedding or some kind of reception, isn't it? Oh, good, right. good Midwestern style. Absolutely. She's, a, you know, she's. A, look at that face. She has a very, very, a great deal of character in her face. Kind of a Madonna, a Renaissance a Madonna. Very, very yeah. lovely. Yeah. And then the guy she's with, of course, is Tim, who <laughs> absolutely can't stop talking. The obvious question is, why is this guy who's fully employed dating college girls? <laughs> yeah, well, you got to. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. What do you mean? Well, he's a lot older, isn't he? How old are you? Eighteen. <laughs> you know, he's one of those guys, you just want to go over there and slap him. <laughs> Why don't you go over, go over there and slap him? Just go over there and slap him. Keep the... Go ahead, no. knock him, knock him silly, drop him! Come on! Hell has broken loose. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, kids. What's going on? Hey, you know, we spent the day. You were nice enough. It was one week ago today. The three of us uh, toured New Jersey, the that neighborhoods fun, of New yeah. Jersey. We had a lovely day. I think it was every. I think it was every viewer's fantasy. We spent five and a half hours just with you. Oh, God bless you. But you know what? Uh, we've done this a lot. We go to these neighborhoods, whether it's in uh, New Jersey or Connecticut or New York, and we just go door to door talking with people. And what you find out is the people are always really, really very, very nice. We weren't really interested in the people. We were more interested in finding out about you. Yeah? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I learned that you're a very bad basketball player. Well, there's a reason for that. I, I, used, to be, I used to be okay. I was never great. I used to be okay. You're from Indiana. That's right. The home of Hoosier basketball. That's right. Who's your madness? You Who's must your have hysteria? been locked in your room by your parents at, like a veal. <laughs> you were... Like a veal? Like he a was, veal, yeah. He was... <laughs> slap him! Like a veal? Just... <laughs> no, you, you shot an air ball. Yeah. You missed a layup. Yeah. And I posted you up and drove around you and scored like nothing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... the You're in shape. <laughs> You got lean for the new show, yeah. and you were a, a lousy hoops player. Gee, he even held a ladder and made me climb up and clean out the gutters of that lady's house. But you know, the, 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 the truth of it is, like I said, I used to play okay. I was never great. But in, in 1968, and it was like the finals of the NCAA Division II college championships, I blew out every ligament in my right knee, seriously, uh -huh. and still scored 40 points. You saw that. <laughs> saw that in a movie. <laughs> well, why not? Hey, let's, let's get... What did you learn about him that you didn't know? Very thoughtful, very philosophical. At one point he said, you know, you're born and you grow up and you have that moment when everything is going just right and then it's all downhill from there and then you die. 
I mean, we had a little talk, Dave and I, I and that's I what he told said me. That. You saw yes, pictures you of a beautiful uh, high school girl, actually. Oh, we did. We went yeah. in, yeah, went in, and there was a, a lovely... You uh, were so philosophical at that right. point. I mean, it was just really touching. But you know, if you, if you think about it, it's a great luxury to be able to do this. It, it... <laughs> what, are, what are we, taking photos for the new stamp? What is this? <laughs> uh, and then, then you told me that you had a cat that was 48 years old. <laughs> <laughs> My wife noticed that you have beautiful feet. We took off our we took off our clothes. We can give that away. That's we right. We did. We, at one point, we undressed. Yeah. Tell them why we had you're, to. Well, no, I don't want to say why. Let that play on the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. why. Why. No, no, no. We took <laughs> off our clothes. I'll say why. No, no, don't say why. Well, we I took will off. say why. I want to talk about his feet. We were searching for ticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife said you have tan, articulated toes. Oh well. Uh, yeah, you're sorry you couldn't have been here tomorrow night, now, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, we got to do a uh, commercial and then we'll continue whatever this is with uh, Gene and Roger. Come on back, folks. show tonight, Siskel and Ebert, uh, Andrea Martin, and I'm sorry we've run out of time. The Indigo Girls won't be here tonight. Oh, it's a joke! It's a joke. Sit still. Come on. <laughs> Boy, she was out of here, though, wasn't she? <laughs> Thank you for that vote of confidence. Uh, let's, let's talk about you guys a little bit. Let's explore the relationship. Uh, you spend a great deal of time together, professionally and socially, I would imagine. Not Is, socially. Uh, not socially? No. But you travel to and from places. Yeah. Film Usually festivals. On the same and, airplane sometimes, yeah. yeah. Do you, do you ever like play jokes on I one like another? to play jokes on pranks. Roger. I like to f I, I feed his ego mm -hmm. and then I set him up for jokes. Like for example, we were taking a flight. He come on, he came on, and he complained that the seating was too cramped, mm -hmm. faulting the airplane, which of course would be debatable in his case. But at any rate, he faulted the aircraft. It was the foot room. It was the foot room. I see. At any rate, uh, <laughs> I he didn't know I was on the plane, so I sent a note through the stewardess pretending to be from the cockpit, saying, Mr. Ebert, we in the cockpit heard about your complaints about the MD-80 aircraft, and uh, we agree with you. We know you're an important journalist in Chicago. <laughs> Feed the ego. Anything I say after that, he's going to agree with. We, he said, uh, if you will keep our opinions private, the navigator didn't come in today. Mm -hmm. We have an extra seat up here in the cockpit. Please knock on the door when the seatbelt sign is removed and we'll, you can fly with us. All right, now let me confirm this. Uh, so far it's true, everything he's saying? Yes, oddly okay. enough. So you get the note. <laughs> I got the note, and I thought it was on the level. Right. And I thought, gee, that was really nice. So when the, when the light went off, I took off my seatbelt, and I went up to knock on the door. I think usually they, have a, they shoot you at that point. Well, that's yeah. what happened to me. Federal marshals well, I take see, you off Now, the my plane. view from behind, two rows from behind, I see Roger reading the note, and I... You know, that, that, that I know I've got, that's the line about being the respected journalist out of Chicago, you know. But think of it, the next week we'd be ready to do our show, and we couldn't do it because I would be in jail right. with federal air, aircraft hijacking charges. Well, this is what happened. Then I realized he's getting up, and I said, there goes my meal ticket. Right. They're going to kill him. Yeah. So I, I, as he was about to knock, I said, yeah. I said, we in the cockpit are standing right behind you. That's well, that's good. But uh, now, do you ever do anything to Gene? I never really have played any practical jokes on him. I, I, his ego is so fragile that I think really he wouldn't stand up under something like that. I sent him a note from an actor, a, a, a young actor in Cop and a Half, an autographed picture, of Burt Reynolds' terrible picture. Even Burt Reynolds, I'm sure, hated the film. Uh, Norman D. Golden III, the little boy, and I sent a note to him, Dear Roger, using a child's scrawl, Dear Roger, uh, all the kids in my class like you more than Gene. Just think, just think. Just Your think, friend Norman D. We put it up think, on the bulletin board. He's all, pointing it out to everybody. Think of all the valuable network time we're losing here to have these juvenile pranks of yours retailed at great length. Oh, but it's, it's way too late to be worrying about that. Oh, look Roger. what they already started out with. <laughs> yeah, look at that. How about the dialing of the phone call? That was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> now, let me ask you about is it, uh, there, uh, maybe these are two separate episodes. There's something about. Uh, a, a card game on an aircraft. A, was it Gin Rummy or something? Oh, that was, that was very irritating. Yes, Gene and I were playing Gin Rummy on an airplane, and he inadvertently put some cards 
on the discard stack instead of on the meld, and then realized what he had done mm -hmm. and wanted to pick them up again and replay the card. Yes, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Even when it's inadvertent, we just had to. Even when it's inadvertent, you're playing for money. Where you're playing, playing for, for money. money. Yes. No, no, you can't take you can't it back. Do that. No, no, if you're playing for no, money, you can't take it back. No. No. A penny, and he, a point. <laughs> and he had a little tantrum, and he threw the cards down, and they flew all over the airplane, and the steward. No, 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 no. You hit the tray, and the food went up. The cards went up, and guess what he grabbed? The food. you take your hand off the cards. That's it. <laughs> okay, speaking of money, can I buy the uh, Letterman plate for twenty three seventy five? Well, you have to talk to the kids. They're the proud owners of them now. Oh, oh, gee. Oh, you you're going to sell it? How much? No, no wait. I'm kidding. Oh, no, no, seriously, is a chance to make some scratch here. <laughs> how about how about a hundred? Not that's my buy. Two hundred. Two hundred dollars. No, do you say you buying it from him or from her? I'm buying. Uh, I don't I want the Paul it. plate. No. <laughs> That's all right, Paul. I get. I'll give you three hundred dollars for that Paul plate. So, so, so. Three fifty over here. Three fifty. Uh, guys, good to see you. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk about the big summer blockbusters, but maybe another time, eh? You got it. Roger, nice to have you Take with care. us. Uh, have a safe trip back to Chicago, and no quarreling, kids. We'll be right back here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Cisco and Ebert. Curtis is uh, fun, isn't she? Just the best. Entertaining. She looks great. Ah, Never looked better. And she's great. in that big blockbuster movie. It's no wonder it's doing so well because of her. I'd go see that. I'd pay my seven bucks to go see her. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last week, ladies and gentlemen, I realized a lifelong dream of mine. We had an afternoon off, and whenever I have any free time, I think to myself, what can I do that will be fun, productive, and entertaining? And it just so happened that our good friends, uh, Siskel and Ebert, were in town from Chicago. So I said, what the heck, I'm going to call up Siskel and Ebert, we're going to get the camera crew, and the three of us are going to go door to door in a neighborhood in New Jersey and, and just visit with folks. That's exactly what we did. Here we go, me, Siskel and Ebert, going door to door in New Hi. Jersey. Roll it, Hal. Look, it, it's uh, Siskel and Ebert. Let me ask you a question about that E.T., and, I may, and forgive me if I've asked you this before, but you know in uh, E.T., when they're at the house there and the, and the, the, the monkey has come down already, and, and there's, the, there's a pizza, they find a pizza in the backyard. Now, is, is, is that the pizza from outer space? Is that a space pizza? Do you know? <laughs> When's the last movie you went to? What was the name of it? Um, Jurassic Park. But I think that Jurassic Park is a waste, of, waste of money. Too. Really, I wouldn't go see it. I haven't seen it yet. But you know, the movie that you did that I really enjoyed was that Jurassic Park. That's a great movie. Can we do anything for you? Uh, Siskel and Ebert and myself? Anything? Any kind of cleanup? Any kind of spring clean? Spruce the place up? Raking? That kind of thing? Clean out the garage, any of that? The gutters could use the cleaning. <laughs> well, is this your truck here? Yes, it is. Uh, let me guess, do you have some kind of wacky horn in the car? <laughs> <laughs> Roger can play the William Tell Overture on just like a surface with his hands. Oh, really? Want to hear me? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Gene here can name all 22 of the helping adverbs. Good, I'll put the flag out for him. <laughs> Go ahead, Gene. Am, is, are, was, were, be, been, do, does, did, have, has, had, shall, should, will, would, can, could, may, might, must, ought. Who do you like better, Siskel or Ebert? <laughs> We've been out here all day, outside in uh, the summer, having a pretty good time. I, you know, I think what we ought to do now Take a minute or two to check ourselves for ticks. Not bad. I can do better than that on the organ. But do you have an organ? Oh, what's serious? No, no, 
Not really. Oh, come on, play with something. Just on my way out, go to a funeral home. Oh. <laughs> Can we go with this? Action pictures? Yeah. Okay. Speed is real. Yeah, good. go see that speed and bus blows up. We'll give you a hundred bucks right now, no questions asked. Each. You a hundred, you a hundred, if you'll let Gene and Roger shave your mustaches off. <laughs> There you go. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Hope a lot. you enjoy that. There you are. That's for you. Thank nice you. going. Roger, am I dreaming or have you lost a few pounds? I, I'm no expert. I'm no Cisco. I'm no Ebert. Right. I mean, three of me wouldn't be an Ebert, but... Uh... <laughs> Who's your favorite actor? Tom Cruise, I guess. Hey, he's good. I like Tom Cruise. You want to play some two-on-two? -two? You and me sure. against Siskel and Ebert? Why right. not? Great. <laughs> Take it back, Rod. There you go. Yes. Two, two nothing, Chicago. How do you think the little piece went? Haven't pretty, seen it. It's pretty good, though, don't yeah. you think? Looking you, forward to seeing it. Had a pretty good feel about it, though, didn't you? And if you, you know, had to give it like. Uh, oh, I know. Huh? Yeah, you want what? us to give it the, the old uh, two thumbs well, up. Yeah, what we're do you not think? doing any of that thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was our big day in New Jersey with Siskel and Ebert. We're going to do a commercial when we come back. The host of Late Night, Conan O'Brien, will be here. Come on! You know what I like about Siskel and Ebert when they're in the uh, program? They yes. usually come out here and they start quarreling, they start spatting, they start uh, fighting like That's cats and dogs. Cute like like a that. couple of old women Isn't at that each cute? other. Yeah. Like, like a, yeah, yeah. Like an old married hey, couple. Hair, hair pulling uh, slap fights, yeah. sure. When it comes to talking with their thumbs, our first guests are the best in the business. During their 19 years together, they have reviewed almost 4,000 films. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Siskel and Ebert of movies, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Here they are. Boys, how are you? How are you? How's it going? Very nice. Let me ask you a question. You guys live in Chicago, don't you? That's right. You, you yeah. know who else lives in Chicago? By the way, isn't uh, Chicago one of the great towns? It's one of the great cities of in, North yes, America, of yes, the world. In the world. Yeah, yes. it is always has been. I I'm love going come to Chicago. Back and shoot again. I would love to go to Chicago. You were great when you were in the Chicago theater. It was 1985. We did some shows there. It's been too long. It was a wonderful experience. The people we're there officially were officially so inviting him back, right? God, right God now. bless you, yeah. Roger we'll and Gene. Open Jean. the door of the huh? limousine. Okay. Yes, we will. Now, now here's what I'm getting to. Uh, Michael Jordan has retired. Does he still live in Chicago? Highland Park. Yeah. So he's still in the area. Yes, he but, is. But northern Northern suburb. Gone most of the time because with his baseball and so forth. Exactly. Uh, Oprah. But when he comes home, he comes home to Chicago. Well, of course, yes. Oprah, yes, she has a very nice uh, apartment, All duplex right. apartment. Oprah and you guys. Yes. So now, between Oprah and you guys, who runs that town? <laughs> Who's calling the shots? Is it you guys or is it Oprah? I think it's Mayor Daly, actually. Yeah, but you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. because, well, well yeah. Ditka's no longer involved, if that's your point. No, that's not, that's not my point. I just want to know, between you and Oprah, who's got the juice who's in that than Who's bigger than us and Oprah? <laughs> no, Ernie, Ernie, Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks, Banks. Yes, yeah. Yes. He's really the, the secret establishment leader. Now, the next five days a week, we're one day a now, week. Now, the next time you guys see Oprah, yeah. do me a favor, invite her on the show. Would you we'll do, do that? that yes. Pass that along. In Why fact, don't you look in the camera and tell her that you want her to come on? Because she'll believe that. Oprah? Oprah, it's me, Dave. Why don't you come and visit? That, uh, that should do the trick. It was done with such obvious sincerity. No, that's just me pretending to be a newt. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave, I, I'm New very verb, glad right? that you mentioned at the beginning of, uh, of the show in your monologue, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Great film and now a not so great play. Oh, no, no, Glenn Close was She's on the show. Yeah. The guy yeah. is not very she good. She plays uh, Norma Desmond and the guy is, who, who is the guy? Who is the, plays the guy? 
Uh, he, he isn't as compelling as William Holden. That's the problem. Oh, okay, but are you going to mention the guy's my, name? Well, maybe not I, after that, I guess. My no, point, I really don't think that he can remember the guy's name. If you want to know had a truth. career before it starts. Yeah. Hey, She's way to great. go, Gene. She's great. Yeah. Uh, the point is that we have had to put now, because of the famous dialogue in that play and film, we've had to put a disclaimer on the beginning of our show, uh -huh. uh, which says, Roger is big, your picture is not small. <laughs> Dave, um, would you like me to explain that to you? And, yes, well, and I wish someone would explain that, yeah. Yeah, well, Dor Norma Desmond in the play and, of course, in the movie says, I'm still big, it's the pictures that got small. That's and right, sure. Gene obviously thought it would be funny uh -huh. if he made a little play on words there. <laughs> So now, yes. now, are you going to make seen a joke? Have you the new Star Trek movie? Oh, here we go. Right, movie? Yeah. No, I haven't seen Where, it yet. You know, Data, the android, who doesn't have a sense of humor, uh -huh. has an operation and has a chip implanted. And it's a humor chip, and it's implanted into his program, and then he has a sense of humor. And so far, now that Gene has the chip, we ought to encourage him. <laughs> See, because that was... That was really his first attempt at humor since he had the operation. Nothing, nothing on tonight's program can trouble me because Megadeth is here. <laughs> Stay and right Oprah's there. Coming. Yeah, old man, wouldn't it be yes. cool to have Oprah here? That'd I be, love Oprah. Yeah. I, I have to do a little piece of business okay, here. Sure. Stay with me. Ladies and gentlemen, now a word from one of our newest sponsors. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, any time at all. Your family will love Big Ass Ham. And the complete line <laughs> of Big Ass Pork products. Remember... It ain't ham unless it's a big-ass ham. Honey, is there anything special you'd like for our big anniversary dinner? Well, dear, you know how I love the delicious taste of big-ass ham. And guess what, sweetheart? Now there's something new that should make our meal even better. New and improved big-ass ham with 25% more flavor. We give it two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Oh, darling, I love you so much. And, and we, we love big-ass big ham. Big-ass pork products. You guys are very photogenic. You bet. Nice going, man. We have to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with Cisco and Ebert. Want to talk about movies? Let's talk sure, about films. Yeah. What do you guys like? We mentioned the new Star the Trek last movie. Seduction. Boy, that's really. Yeah, we had the uh, one of the stars. Linda uh, Fiorentino. Uh, yes, yes. Well, that was amazing. amazing. She came on this show and she mentioned the name of the executive who called her up and told her she had a nice little ass. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. My name. Now, you know, but you like that, that same movie. executive called up Gene and told him the same thing. Hey, well, <laughs> you couldn't have used the word little for you. Now, boys, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> now I got a big ass. <laughs> Oh, in fact, wait a minute. <laughs> what a news! Surprised the network didn't yeah. break in with a news flash. On that. Yeah, not exactly a bullet. Yeah, wow. yeah, I know. Yeah. Call rather, but get them right now. Now, what about the uh, Star Trek movie? Is this uh, this is uh, this it's okay if you're a Star Trek fan because they love seeing all these characters get together. The story is kind of stupid. And, and when William Shatner, yeah, he's Captain Kirk, you know. He, That's right. Uh, he, I didn't know that. He, he dies in this movie twice. 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 But will he ever Thanks come back? Thanks to the Nexus coil. If it makes enough money, he'll yeah, come I back. Yeah, I think the Nexus coil could bring him back around again for okay. part eight if necessary. Yeah, but his hair will be in part the eight. I've heard picture. that his hair will be You know, the funny thing is, eight. he retired and he still looks younger than Captain Picard. Well, that's good. You know, he's got the tan and the curly locks. What, what did you guys think, think of? Pulp Fiction's the best picture. Yeah, there you go. Along with uh, Hoop Dreams. Yeah, those are the two best pictures. Pulp Fiction, I just saw it uh, earlier this week a second time. It just races by. The dialogue is fresh. The story construction is fresh. I wish more American movies were like that. They ha we haven't had American movies like that picture since the early 70s. You know what, and I like the movie very well, and I tell people that I like the movie very well, and they go see it, and they come back, and they say, well, it's violent. And yes, it is violent. Well, you can't, it, undeniably, it's violent. But still, it's done in a fashion that it's, it's kind of like amusement park violence. You know, I've seen it... <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that is. That's an interesting insight. <laughs> out of our turf. You eat too much uh, cotton candy I've and seen the movie, up. It's that I've seen the movie three times. I saw it once. I thought it was really violent. By the third time, I realized that actually 
it's not as violent. You don't see what you think you're seeing. It's not as violent as you think it is. He gives you the impression mm -hmm. that it's violent, and it's actually more comic than anything else. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I thought John Travolta was very uh, interesting. As okay. play, yeah, he plays just a dumb date, guy, doesn't the, he? The date between Uma Thurman and John Travolta is one of the great relationships in the whole history of American Look movies. for a national chain of Jack Rabbit Slim's restaurants. Yeah, because that's where yeah. they went there. You, you know, uh, I was in Cabin Boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, uh, did, you <laughs> die, did you die in that film? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't die in the film. Not even once. <laughs> it was, huh? Not now, wait even. a minute. You're, uh, you're, as, you're as big a star as there is in the entertainment world, and that picture stunk out the oh, joint. Oh, no. It was, and it, why couldn't you save it? No, why couldn't you it save was, it? it? First of all, it didn't stink. It was an interesting odd little bit of peculiarity. You are always so loyal to your associates. It's re and, really inspiring. And, and you find something wrong with that? Uh, no, Look at I, our relationship. It's, it's, it's really wonderful, yes. Yeah, so. uh, Antagonism works. Is there, is there going to be, or has this happened, they, they named a street after you guys? Yeah, the Siskel and Ebert uh, Passage or Way. What is it? Siskel and Ebert Way. Siskel yes. and Ebert Way. Are the joints is, it, is it near the Dan Ryan? No. It's, it's at the corner of... Uh, <laughs> It's at the, there's a corner in Chicago now, Siskel and Ebert and William is, S. Paley. Yeah, oh, yeah. Who right used to own the studio. WBBM Is it near studio? Wacker Drive? Very uh, close to Wacker Drive. Well, watch your language, <laughs> young man. <laughs> the, only, the only two roadways I know in Chicago, uh, Wacker Drive and the Dan Ryan. And now, Siskel and Ebert. And you've never Siskel heard of State yeah. or Lake? Oh, sure, you yeah. Know, the but I'm just, hey, come on, it's, the relax, it's vanity all for charity. Addresses, what? Though, you know, like one CBS <laughs> plaza. You know, or whatever, or Siskel and Ebert way, the fire trucks can never find them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the other day, Gene caught on fire and he almost burned to death mm. because the fire trucks were circling looking for Siskel, Siskel and Ebert way. Yeah, that's quite a oh, story. Oh, that's a great yeah. story, Rod. I don't, I don't. <laughs> that is, Dave. Is that the worst story you've heard this week? Oh, no, Anything no. Anything to keep oh. Gene from feeling bad about his no. earlier. You guys are show. great. I think the world of you and your, your big special. When's it coming up? Oh, you don't have a special. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they. Oh, I, th I thought there for a second you, had, you usually have a special. We got cut out of his special. Don't you have you like a big that? Thanksgiving special? Uh, Christmas or special. Yeah, Christmas oh, the big Christmas special. special. Yeah, yeah, just keep watching. I'll have a December. before you know it, there'll be a special with these guys. Uh, <laughs> Roger, good to see you again. All my best, sir. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank Gene, you. Nice to see you. Let me right. I'm so happy you folks are in a good mood tonight because it's uh, right in the middle of the holiday season. We've been on the air now a year and a half, year and three months, whatever it's been. And you know, each and every night, we are constantly striving, looking, searching, seeking new ways to improve this show, to make it more entertaining because our sole responsibility to the vast North American viewing public is to entertain this great land of ours. So. With that in mind, tonight we're going to show you new things that we will be doing especially for the holiday season. Here we go, Pedro, take it away. Okay. Yeah, thanks for making us all sleepy. Yellow. Sure. Anytime. Now, listen to this. Every time we do a joke on this program that gets a laugh during the holiday season, this is what you'll be hearing. Okay, now, God forbid we do a joke that doesn't get a laugh during the holidays, then this is what you'll hear. Ho, 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 that really sucks. Thank you so much, Santa. Also for the holidays, our stage manager, Biff Henderson, will be drinking so much eggnog that something surprising is bound to happen. Watch. He's doing all of this, ladies and gentlemen, with a broken arm, this guy. Oh boy.
And uh, tonight we'll be introducing a special holiday treat from one of our sponsors. That's right, I'm talking about new Big Ass Fruitcake. <laughs> The only fruitcake on the market today that's 90% pork and pork byproducts. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, our entire staff and crew are getting into the holiday spirit. Even the rats that live right here in the Ed Sullivan Theater are doing their part. Hal, do me a favor. Get a shot of right over there by the bookcase and see if we can't see our little rodent friends and show you how... Oh, yeah, there they are. Look at that. They're all dressed up in their little Santa hats. Isn't that cute? The little... And finally, as a real old-fashioned touch from time to time, real live celebrities will pelt our studio audience with snowballs. Boys, take it away. Get ready for real holiday fun. Here we go. Wait a minute! 